again to our channel BSM TV where we study the word of God to the Lord to the testimony where the message of the three uh, of the three seals is being preached the message that is going to seal God's people so that they will be able to enter the soon coming kingdom without wasting our time uh, we're going to learn today about the glorious prospect for those who accept David and the branch the glorious prospect for those who accept david and the branch so for us to understand this lesson we're going to explain first who this david is i was talking about the david who is in the grave i was talking about the david the one who killed goliath or it's somebody else we're going to learn that first and we're also going to discuss about who this so-called branch is and we're being told here that there is a glorious uh, prospect or a glorious future event that has been promised for the people who accept the truth. David and the branch in these last days that we are living in. So we're going to start, uh, we're going to read Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 1. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord himself, meaning this is the truth and these words are going to be fulfilled. Verse 2, Thus speaks the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write you all the words that I have spoken to you in a book. Write here the words that I have spoken to you in the book. This is Jeremiah chapter 2, chapter 30, verse 2. Then verse 3 says, For see the days come, said the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel and Judah. So we, as we all know, the Israelites were scattered. The ten tribes were scattered long back and they did not come back to the land. We have Judah and Israel. We have Judah and Benjamin, only two tribes in the land of Canaan today. So God is saying here, he will bring them back to the land that he promised to their forefathers. The land that he promised to Isaac, to uh, Abraham, to Jacob. That land was promised that they will be given for an everlasting possession. So God is saying in these last, last days, he's going to do what he promised to his people. I'm going to continue with Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3. Save the Lord. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. So in these last days, Israel is going to repossess that land. That is where Christ is going to set up his kingdom. We're not supposed to wait. Or we're not going to meet him first in the clouds before the kingdom is set. First of all, he's going to gather his people in Israel, and then afterward, we're going to uh, meet him in the clouds. That is the order of events. It's, 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 it's important to know the order of events on how God is going to harvest his people, how he's going to harvest Israel of today. We're going to continue with Hosea chapter 3 verse 5 so that you understand who this David is. Hosea chapter 3 verse 5. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God. They will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. David is, is being mentioned here. And shall so fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. So these events will take place in the latter days. In the time of the ten toes that are in the, uh, the statue of Daniel chapter 2 verse uh, in Daniel chapter 2. So this is the David. God is saying he's going to reign over his people in the last days. He was going to lead his people into the kingdom. Hosea chapter 3 verse 4 says, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. They do not have a king now, and they are not a kingdom. Because what you call a kingdom is a, it comprises of the land. It comprises of the laws, which are going to be the statutes 
and the judgments. It comprises of the subjects. So this kingdom that is going to be set is going to be in the land of Israel and the children of God who are going to conquer the devil, who are going to be saved in these last days are going to be the subjects of this kingdom. The 144,000, the whale sheep and the great multitude that are going to come from the Gentile, from the Gentiles that are going to be harvested by the 144,000. This I'm going to read here, tract number nine, page 43. Behold, I make all things new. That's the name of the tract. Behold, I make all things new. It says here, as ancient David is in the grave, ancient David, the one who killed Goliath, is in the graves, in the grave today. So, want to see whether he's the one that is being referred to in the scriptures or is, is not the one. As ancient David is in the grave, the king here promised must be an anti-typical David. So the king being promised here is supposed to be an anti-typical David, not the one who is, uh, who is in the grave. Otherwise, in order to fulfill the prophecies, ancient David must necessarily rise from his grave. So here we are talking about the anti-typical David, who is going to lead the children of God into the promised kingdom. There is another quotation here that I'm going to read from the book by Viti Otev, Symbolic Code, 5 Symbolic Code, 5 SC 1, page 5, 3.1. It says, Moreover, we are told by the prophet Ezekiel, in language unmistakable, meaning in language that is easy to understand, that at the establishing of the kingdom, which is to break all the kingdom. So the, this kingdom that Christ is going to come and set is going to break all the kingdoms that are there, that are represented by the ten toes of the stage of Daniel chapter 2, the one with uh, the toes with, mixed with clay and iron. So these kingdoms are going to be destroyed by the kingdom of Christ which is to break all kingdoms. God will have one man to teach his people. This is uh, what the Bible is teaching us now, that God is going to have one man to teach his people, as it was in the time of Moses, as it was in the time of David, when they spoke with God, delivering the messages to the congregation, to the people. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant, David. So this one man is going to be chosen by God, is going to feed his children with the word of God, with the meat in due season, with the present truth, so that they understand the order of events of how they're going to be harvested when Christ comes. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. The Lord has spoken it, and it will happen. No one can disannul this. And I will make with them a covenant. God is going to make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land. All the evil beasts are going to be taken out of the land. It's going to be a peaceful uh, kingdom whereby all these troubles that we are facing today right here on earth are not going to be there. No crying, no weeping, no armed robberies, no diseases, no everything that is making people cry today. It's going to be a peaceful kingdom that Christ is coming to establish. We should work hard, brethren, so that we become part of this kingdom that Christ is coming to set. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places around about my hill a blessing and I will cast the shower, I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessings. So this is the glorious prospect that God has promised to all who are going to do his will in these last days, all who are going to be saved. I'm going to continue reading. There's another uh, quotation here. For symbolic code 10, 6.1. It says, in the days of Moses, in the days 
when Moses was leading uh, the Israelites, and in the days of David, when the Lord had the work in his own hands, he spoke to the people through Moses and through David. So God was speaking to one individual and the message then was going to be spread to all the other people. He spoke with only one person and thus he ruled. That is how God ruled during the time of Moses and during the time of, of David. In like manner, Will he at this time, in like manner, will he at this time of the end rule the work when him takes the reins in his own hands? So this is how God is going to rule again in the last days. In prophecy, God revealed to Ezekiel the injustice which in the later days, our time, would be done to God's people by their shepherds. So God has seen the injustice that is going to be done to his people by the shepherds, the shepherds of today. What are they going to do? They are going to stop feeding the flock with the right messages, with the meat and juices. And now God is saying here, I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them. Even my servant, David, the name of this leader is going to be David and he shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David a prince among them I the Lord have spoken it thus Ezekiel was also told that the present system and organization of many shepherds will be replaced by a new one and be conducted by the shepherd uh, by one shepherd instead of men. So God has spoken it. This is exactly what he is going to, to do. There's, there's going to be a David who will reign over his people and he's going to communicate with that David and instruct people on how they should worship him. But the problem here is that many are not going to accept that David. Many are going to uh, are not going to accept even the brands whom are going to discuss here. Now that we understand that this David is the antitypical David. It's not the David who died long back, but the antitypical who is going to lead God's people in the last days. Now we want to understand who this branch, who the branch is. Zechariah chapter 6 verse 12 reads, Speak and speak to him, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the name, uh, the man, the Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. So here we're being told of a man whose name is the branch, and this man called branch is going to build the temple of the Lord in the last days. That was Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. I'm going to read again from uh, Acts of the Apostles, AA, page 595, 595. Point two, it reads, Upon the foundation that Christ himself has laid, the apostles built the church of God. Yes, they built the church of God upon the foundation that Christ himself had, had laid before he, resurrected, he, he went up to heaven. Scriptures, scriptures, the figure of the erection in the scriptures, the figure of the erection of the temple is frequently used to illustrate the building of the church. Zechariah refers to Christ as the branch. Zechariah refers to Christ as the what? As the branch who is going to, who should build the temple of the Lord. So Christ is called the branch and he is going to build the temple of the Lord. He speaks of the Gentiles as helping in the work. So we should not look down upon the Gentiles because they are also helping. They will also help in the in the work of the building of, of God's temple. So it's clear, brethren, that Zachariah is referring to Christ as the branch. So Christ is the branch, right? I'm going to read again another quotation that explains about this new name that were given to Christ. CIS, CIHS, page 93.1. The work of Christ is man's intercessor 
is represented in that beautiful prophecy of Zechariah. So Christ is our intercessor. And in 1844, as we all know, he went into the most holy place, into the holy of holy place, in the holy of holies, so that he intercedes for us as we confess our sins day by day, right here on earth during the times of prayer, Christ will be interceding for us to the Father. So that work that he is doing, he's using the name, the branch. The work of Christ as man's intercessor is presented in that beautiful prophecy of Zechariah concerning him whose name is the branch. So that's his name. That's the name he's using today. That's the name you should pray using. We should pray in the name of the branch. We should baptize in the name of, of the branch because that is the name that he is using today. COL page 141.4. In order to strengthen our confidence in God, what, shall, what should we do in order for us to strengthen our confidence in, in God when we pray to him? Christ teaches us to address him by a new name. Can you see this? This is clear, brethren. Christ teaches us to address him in, by what? By a new name, which is not Christ, obviously, which is obviously not Christ, but the branch that we are teaching today. Christ teaches us to address him by a new name, a name entwined with the dearest associations of the human heart. He gives us the privilege of calling the infinite God our Father. This name spoken to him and of him is a sign of our love and trust toward him. Can you see what this using this name means? It says here, it's a sign. It is a sign of our love and trust. To show that we love him, to show that we trust him, we should use that new name. And the pledge of his regard and relationship to us, spoken when asking his favor or blessing, it is as music in his ears. So when we use this name when praying to, uh, to the branch, it is as music to his ears. And everything that we ask from him, we're going to be given. He will answer all our prayers just because we've used the right name that he is using as he is doing the intercessory work in the most holy place. So what is this glorious prospect, this uh, glorious event that God has promised to give to the children that are going to be saved, to those who are going to accept David and the branch. It's, a, it's an event that is yet future, that is being promised to those who are going to be obedient to the branch, who are going to be obedient to David, the one whom God is going to choose so that he leads his people back to the promised land. So we're going to uh, see what it is. It is actually the kingdom that is being promised, a peaceful kingdom that is going to be set in the land of Canaan that was promised to our forefathers. So I'm going to read uh, Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it reads, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world. So this message of the kingdom, the message of the kingdom is going to be preached to all uh, the world. This simply means that there's no, no one is going to say, I have never heard about this message of the kingdom. Everyone is going to hear it. Everyone is going to hear the message of the kingdom. It is going to be preached in all the world for a witness. For a witness. What does that mean? It simply means that not everyone is going to accept this message of the kingdom. But it's only for a witness. So that nobody says, I've never heard about this message. It's new to me. Everyone will say, I rejected, but I heard about this message. So everyone is going to... Uh, receive this message before Christ comes to set up his kingdom for a witness to all nations and then the end will come. So the end is not going to come brethren before everybody understands the message of the setting up of the kingdom. Everyone should know it then the end comes. I'm going to read again PK this is another quote PK Prof Prophets and Kings page 705 it reads, not by any temporary failure of Israel, however, was the plan of uh, the ages 
for the redemption of mankind to be frust to be frustrated. So all the evil things that were done by Israel are not going to stop the promises of God. Even if they disobeyed God long back, this is going to stop God. This is not going to stop God from fulfilling his promises. He will fulfill them using the church that is there today. Those to whom the prophet was speaking might not hear the message given, but the purposes of Jehovah were nevertheless to move steadily forward uh, to their complete fulfillment. So everything that God promises will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled in these last days. That is, uh, from the rising of the sun even unto the going down of the same, the Lord declared through his messenger, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Everyone is going to know uh, God when he, everyone is going to know Christ when he comes to set up the kingdom. Even the Gentiles will know him. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering. For my name shall be great among the heathen. Oh, the world, the whole world is going to know God when he comes to set up this kingdom. PK 713. PK 713. That which God proposed to do for the world through Israel. God had promised to give this land of Canaan for an everlasting possession to the Israelites. And that which he proposed to do, he is going to fulfill that with Israel. He will accomplish that with his church on earth today. His church today, his people the people who obey him, the people who are acting upon all the heaven-sent messages. These are the people on which he's going to fulfill all the promises that he had given to ancient Israel. This is what the quotation is saying here. He has let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, even to his covenant-keeping people who faithfully render him the fruits in their seasons. Never was the Lord been, never has the Lord been without true representatives in this on this earth who have made his interests their own. So in every generation, God has a people who choose to, to be his representatives. There is always God's people in every generation, even if many reject, but there is always a people who choose to worship God with uh, in, in, in spirit and in truth. These witnesses for God are numbered among spiritual Israel. That is what you call spiritual Israel. And to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to his ancient people. So he's going to fulfill this with his church today. So this glorious prospect that has been promised to those who accept David and the branch is the setting up of the kingdom. It is the kingdom that... He has promised to ancient Israel and he is now going to give it to his people today who have made his interests their own. Today, the church of God is free to carry forward the completion of the divine plan for the salvation of the lost race. So this glorious prospect that uh, the future event that God has promised to those who obey David and the branch is the kingdom, is the peaceful kingdom to be established right here on, on earth. I'm going to continue with the same book, Prophets and Kings, 720, PK 720. Then it is that the redeemed from among men will receive their promised inheritance. What is this inheritance? It is the land. It is the land of Canaan. It is the land of Israel. Thus God, God's purpose for Israel will meet with literal fulfillment. That which God purposes men is powerless. That which God purposes men is powerless to disannul. What God has planned, no man can disannul. No man can stop it from happening. Even amid the waking, uh, the waking of evil, God's purposes have been moving steadily forward to their accomplishment. God's purposes will always be accomplished, no matter what men may 
try to do to stop those things, no matter what the devil may do to try to stop people from being saved, all the promises of God, all the purposes of God will be accomplished in the last days. It was thus with the house of Israel throughout the history of the divided monarchy. It is thus with the spiritual Israel today. The sea of Patmos looking down through the ages of the time of this restoration of Israel testified. So this is the time of the restoration where everything is going to be put back. All the laws that were trodden down are going to be put back, are going to be kept again. I beheld... This is what, uh, okay? I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, and stood before the throne and before the lamp, clothed with the white robes and psalms in their hands. I heard a voice as it were voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters. Here being described are the great multitude that are going to be uh, harvested by the 144,000 when they shall preach from Mount Zion to preach the message of the statutes and the judgments. So do not look down upon the uh, Gentiles because there is a time when they are going to be harvested they have their own time probation will face close for the house of israel before they are close so the great multitudes are going to are also going to be part of the soon coming kingdom i'll continue with pp again page 376 it reads plainly he jeremiah foresaw the downfall of the kingdom and the scattering of the inhabitants of judah among the nations so jeremiah foresaw the time when god scattered the israelites because of their disobedience they were scattered but that does not mean the story is going to end there there's a time which is now whereby god is will start gathering them back uh, to their land so i'll continue Jeremiah foresaw the downfall of the kingdom and the scattering of the inhabitants of Judah among the nations. But with the eye of faith, he looked beyond all this to the times of restoration. Ringing in his ears was, was the divine promise, I will gather the remnant of my flock. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries. Can you see that this is different? It says here, out of all countries. When Moses was taking the children of Israel from, from Egypt, it was, it was from one country to Canaan. But now it's going to be from all the countries going into Israel, which is almost at the center of the world. This is going to be a, a glorious event, brethren, whereby people will be gathered from all the four corners of the world to the center of the earth. God has said it and he is going to, to do it. He is going to fulfill it. Behold, the days come. I will raise up David. I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them. And I will bring them again to their foes. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall ex execute judgment and justice on the earth so david is going to lead his people uh, god's people in the last days and blessed are they that are going to obey this david whom god is going to, to choose in the, in his days judah shall be saved and israel shall dwell safely and this is the name whereby he shall be called the lord our righteousness thus prophecies of oncoming judgment were mingled with the promises of final and glorious deliverance. It is going to be a time of a glorious deliverance, people being taken from the hidden lands to the land, to the promised land. In, in that day, saith Isaiah, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his, uh, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again, his hand again, the second time 
to recover the remnant of his people. This is the second time. The first time it was the time of the Exodus movement from Egypt to Jerusalem. Now it is the second time from all the hidden lands, all the countries in the wilderness to Jerusalem, the promised land. And he shall set an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Can you see this, brethren? People are going to be gathered. We are going to be gathered from the four corners of the earth to the land of Jerusalem. Now, we want to see... There are some people who are not going to accept this David, who are not going to accept Christ, even who are going to reject, who are going to refuse to use um, the new name of Christ, to pray in the name the branch, to baptize in the name the branch. They have been described by Christ in the proverb, in the, in the parable of Luke chapter 19, verse 12. The parable of the of the noble name of the of the noble man. Luke chapter 19, verse 12 to 14. Christ here is describing uh, those who are not going to accept the antitypical David. Many are going to reject. Many are going to doubt. Many are going to doubt because of their own reasons. Because in most cases, God does not work, uh, does not think the same way we think because he is not man that he should think like man. He works in ways that we can never think of, that are contrary to the ways, to the way that you think. So that is why men are going to doubt his messages. Men are going to doubt even the one leader that is going to lead his people. How? I'm going to read here from the tract Mount of Zion. At the 11th hour, chart number 8, page 70, page 70 and 71, it reads, The certain nobleman in this parable is Christ. So the nobleman in this parable of Matthew chapter 19 is Christ himself, who soon after his resurrection departed to the heaven of heavens. After resurrection, he departed to the, to the heaven of heavens. The far country, so the far country being referred to in the parable is the heaven of heavens to be crowned king of kings and the lord of lords. His ten servants who are to occupy till his coming represent manifestly the ministry at the closing of the gospel dispensation. And his citizens accordingly represent the light. As he sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. The only conclusion admissible is that shortly before his return, shortly before Christ comes back to set up the kingdom, Christ shall inform his citizens that he is taking the reins in his own hands. So he's going to inform his citizens that he's taking the what? The reins into his own, into his own hands to set up his kingdom. And that they, upon hearing the announcement, the people now, upon hearing the announcement, they shall refuse to submit themselves to the one through whom he is to rule. Many people are going to reject the person, the one through whom Christ is going to, to rule. This is, this, this is the David, the antitypical David that we've been talking about. Many are going to refuse. Many are going to reject this antitypical David. Observe that in the message which they sent after him, his servants did not say, they did not say this. They did not say, we will not have you reign over us. We will not have you reign over us. But rather, we will not have this man to reign over us. So they are, they are rejecting this man who has been appointed by Christ to lead his people. They are refusing to let him reign over them. Men are doing this today. What they objected was Christ reigning over them through someone else. So they did not actually re reject Christ, but the man who was appointed by Christ to rule his people in the last days, to take his people back into the kingdom. I'll continue here. 
clearly then what they objected was Christ reigning over them through someone else. Clearly then, before he is coronated and prior to his return to recon with him, his servants he appoints a man so before christ returns in these last days he is going to appoint a man to reign over them in his stead he's going to appoint a man to reign over us in his stead who is the antitypical david so we're not talking about the ancient david we're not talking about the david in the grave but the antitypical who is to be chosen today before christ comes to set up the kingdom Whereupon they say to him by their attitude and stand toward his message, we will not have this man reign over us. Men are going to say we will not have this man reign over, over us. Although this man, as we now see, is the antitypical David. This man is the antitypical David. But many are going to say, we are not going to let him reign over us. In simple means, it is the visible king. It is the visible king, the antitypical David, who is going to lead God's people in the last days. But as we have read here, many are going to say, we will not let this man reign over us. Men are going to refuse to be led by this person. So what this message is saying to you today, brethren, is that be careful, be careful in the last days when God chooses a leader who's going to lead his people to the promised land. Be not on the side of the people who are going to reject. Be not on the side of the people who are going to reject the branch, who are going to reject David, the uh, antitypical leader in the last days. Why? Because that glorious prospect, that promise of the kingdom is not, you are not going to be part of the people who are going to be gathered for the kingdom if you reject to be led by this man who's going to lead those people in the last days if you refuse to pray in the name of the branch you are not going to be gathered into the Ghana into the kingdom that is to be set in the last days before Christ before we meet Christ in the clouds he is going to set up a kingdom but and only those as we have just learned who accept David and the branch are going to to enjoy the kingdom. They're going to enjoy with Christ in the kingdom, in the everlasting kingdom that was promised to our forefathers. May God help us, brethren, as we study together these messages so that we practice everything that we learn. So be careful when you hear about this antipathetical David, when you hear about Christ's new name, make sure you pray using that name. Make sure you accept that message so that you live eternally with God. May God bless the